Hey, hey, it's a new day and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for this video. It is gonna be kind of a three-parter. Right here is my nursery and I have a baby coming in a couple weeks. I can't tell you when because babies are unpredictable like that. But in this video, I'm going to be getting our nursery together. This is my third baby, but it is a new house for us. So we've never had an actual baby in here. Um, Fletcher was, I think, six months old when we moved in. And so, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done. So I'm gonna be getting some of that together. Um, and then I will do like a whole tour reveal, like some essentials I recommend that you have if you're you know, thinking about having a baby or if you have a baby on the way, um, or it's just fun to be nosy, right guys? And then we're gonna sit down and chat about my birth plan, what a typical Mennonite birth plan looks like. That that could get interesting. <laughs> anyway, so stick around. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm actually going to be using my Cricut Maker 3, which thank you to Cricut for sponsoring a portion of today's video. I'm going to be using my new Cricut machine to make a faux wallpaper wall. I'm so excited about it. So stick around for that. Even if you could care less about nurseries, you could probably use this technique in a different room in your home as well. So hopefully, yeah, we can learn a little bit together and yeah, I can't wait to see what this little room becomes. So let me show it to you. By the way, if you are new to my channel, my name is Megan Fox and I have a four-year-old, a two-year-old and a baby on the way and I'm a Mennonite living in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. What else do you need to know about me? Probably not much. <laughs> Let's get into it. So here is the room. It's just like pretty much a baby warehouse. I don't know if you remember what it used to look like with the green walls and like the brown trim and it was just really dated. I'm so glad that we got new carpet, new paint. The paint is called Pale Oak by Benjamin Moore. And yeah, it just looks so much more fresh in here, but we'll look at that all later once this is done. Cause right now it's kind of a disaster zone. I just like plopped everything as I was getting things together. And as things came in from like Amazon orders or whatever, oh, I'm huffing and puffing. All I did was run up the steps. <laughs> I, down here, I have, basically I went to a consignment store and got tons of baby stuff and actually a few items for my bigger kids. So they need to be washed. This is the little wash basket with more baby stuff that needs to be washed. So I'm gonna need to go through all of that. I did start organizing my drawers, but I have some organizers coming in the mail so I can like sit these upright and like be able to see them better. And I just think it will help with organization and just keeping things from being <laughs> completely like just lost. And that way Josh can help out too, which is very essential. <laughs> you know, he can find everything he needs and he has outfits all put together. There's stuff here from the old nursery, new things. I, yeah, we'll talk about these things in a bit. Here's the crib, the mobile needs to be put together again. And here's a rug I'm dying to open, but I was waiting to do it with you guys. We're gonna see, I just ordered a little one. We'll see how it looks in here. I think I probably should've went bigger, but I didn't. We just put new carpeting in here and I felt like it was kind of ridiculous to put a rug right on top of brand new carpeting. Might as well enjoy it a little bit. <laughs> Over here, I'm gonna have a clothing setup of the bigger sizes. And then here's like a small square cubicle. I'm really excited about this setup. And here's kind of where I was thinking about going with my you know, nursery in general. One thing I wanted to highlight was the wall here. I love the detail, the design with like a rust kind of just like print on the wall. But I think I'm gonna do a different print. I'm gonna get a faux wallpaper look on this pale oak wall. And I'm so excited about it. So you have to stick around and see if it works out. But yeah, I love a good before and after. <laughs> so. Here's your before, or my before, I guess. I'm the one that's really gonna have the satisfying feeling <laughs> when this is done. So here I am just taking all the tags off of the clothing. And this video is a more pregnancy related video. So I don't know if that's bringing in different types of people for this video. So I thought I'd just do a quick little introduction if you are new to my channel. I was a very reluctant mom. Before I had any children, I taught school and I loved it. It was so fulfilling and I never wanted to quit. And we had been married about four years till we decided to start our family, but I was just so fulfilled with teaching school and I honestly, I thought that being a mom would just be boring and staying at home and just a waste of my talents. And it sounds so terrible to say, I'm actually truly embarrassed about it, but I am sharing this just because I know I'm not the only one out there that has thoughts like that. And I want to let you know that I, I love I love being a mom. It's like my favorite thing ever. I'm so glad I finally did it. And I just, yeah, encourage you in that, that you know what, God can change your heart. We all have different stories, but I just wanted to share mine in case 
you know you feel like you're the only one that was ever like that so it's been four years now since I became a mom and I've just loved it to death. <laughs> if somebody asks me what my favorite part about being a mom is, I always have to laugh and say that my favorite part is that I get to be my own boss. And the other thing I love too is that being a mom has so many different facets. I mean, I have homemaking, then I have the mom stuff, the parenting, the like the little day field trips, the educating, being a teacher. Like as a mom, you wear so many hats and I love that. I don't know where I got the idea that I was gonna be bored let me know down below, are you a mom? Do you ever want to be one? And I know there are women out there that are bound to be watching my channel that, you know, would love to be a mom and it's just not happening for them. And if that's you, just know that I'm praying that you will get to meet your children soon. I have friends that are in that stage of life too and it is not easy. <laughs> me and my little furry friend here. If you are planning on being a mom, um, just decide right now that thrifting is part of the job. Um, I don't know how people keep their kids clothed in all brand new stuff. I mean, yes, Old Navy and Target and H&M have some great prices, but kids, especially babies, they go through clothes like crazy. I mean, every three months, babies are in a new size of clothing. So thrifting is just part of the job in my opinion. And I've saved so much money over the years just by thrifting and by, you know, then passing my gently used stuff on to other people that they can use. And it's just like the circle of life kind of. <laughs> <laughs> to me, thrifting is just part, yeah, it's part of being a mom. So I am going to get this load started and then I'm going to move on to, I'm saving the rug because I'm excited and nervous at the same time. I think what I'm going to do next is clear off this space back here and then we'll do the rug because I'm just dying to see it. <laughs> And I do not use fancy baby dreft or anything like that. Um, I tried it with my first daughter, but I just like to put all the kids' clothes together with mine. Like kind of like that's the delicate cycle. I mention all the time that I do one load of laundry a day. That way <laughs> I never get piled up. And the way I sort it is towels and washcloths, Josh's dirty stuff, and then I have delicates, which is mine and the kids' stuff. And we will include the baby stuff in that and then whites. In the early stages, I will definitely be using something more organic and gentle that, you know, doesn't irritate the baby's skin or anything, but as they get older, I just switch to good old Tide or whatever, <laughs> all, something like that, and it works just fine. So in my closet here, look at all these diapers and wipes. I got their sensitive skin baby wipes just because I like the color of them. And plus, I mean, they're good for sensitive skin, right? So that's great. They have pink ones and blue ones. And then I got newborn diapers. Did I say this is all from Target? It's all from Target. <laughs> and then I got two boxes of newborn and then size one and size one. Um, I might need more newborn ones, but you just never know. And Target had a sale where if you bought I think it was $100 in baby stuff, you got a $20 gift card. So I did that and then I'm also going to register with them so that I can use a 15% off coupon to buy things because I think I might buy a hands-free pump, which would be awesome to get 15% off on. And am I buying any other big ticket items this time around? I don't think so. Um, I mean, I've had two kids before, so it's pretty much just, oh, I wanna get a forehead scanning thermometer too. Um, or maybe an ear one, I heard they're more accurate. And then I'll put some other, yeah, just like random supplies and stuff on that registry. And then I'll just buy it all for myself. <laughs> it's what I did with Fletcher too. With Ivani, I had a baby shower. So people bought things for me, but I don't need near as much with a third kid. And I still like registering with Target. So you get like the free welcome bundle and then also that 15% off coupon, which comes in clutch. So that is a tip for me. make humans this small. Oh my word, I could cry. I know to most casual bystanders, it seems like I had my kids pretty quickly. Um, the first two are 18 months apart, but it's actually going to be two and a half years since I've had my last baby. And honestly, I forget a lot of things. I forget, like I feel almost like a new mom again, which I know two and a half years isn't that big of a gap, but guys, it feels like it. After having two of them 18 months apart, a two and a half year gap just feels big. I'm actually kind of excited to have a little newborn around again. 
I'm also very nervous. <laughs> Josh is the same way. He's like, oh, it's gonna be so nice to have a little bit. He loves the baby stage. I'm not more like that type. I just think about the sleep deprivation and just like around the clock feedings and stuff. So I'm excited to get the baby out and to meet them. But at the same time, I'm also, I just know that postpartum phase, you just have to really be kind to yourself. And with two children on the side, I know it's not gonna be any walk in the park, but I figure, you know what? I will plan for the worst and expect the best and hopefully we can get through it. And I shouldn't even say get through it because I want to enjoy it. The baby stage is so short. It's so short and I want to, yeah, savor every day. Okay, so here is how the rug is supposed to look. I've had some pretty bad luck with rugs already, so we'll see if it looks anything the same, but I have cornbread in the oven and my timer just rang, so I'm gonna run down and take care of that and then I'll be back up and we're gonna look at it. Oh, I'm nervous. Afternoon snack. <laughs> okay, I spent $65 on this thing. It is a three by five. Okay, first impression, it's already not as dark as it looks on that picture. But wow, I love it, it's so pretty. Is it too pink? Does it look rust to you guys? It's rust. I was worried that it might be too like pinkish, but wow. I like it, but now where do I put it because of the sizing? <laughs> like it definitely cozies up the space, but it's also small, so I will have to play around with it and see what I think. that this rug is completely unnecessary and I don't actually need it, I decided I'm not gonna spend a ton of money and so I just bought the small one. I love this rug so much, I wish I had gotten it full size. Like, it's so beautiful. I, I want it in my living room too. I'm really not sure how to position it. I think what I'll do is wait till the whole room is put together and then kind of make the rug be the last piece, but I am gonna keep it laid out so it can start flattening. Okay, time to talk about this adorable and easy wall project. I'm so excited about this project. One, because it really transformed the space, but also because I know so many of you can use these techniques in your own home to get a look for less. For this project, you're gonna need your Cricut, and I use my Cricut Maker 3, which is an amazing machine. It can cut so many different things. You'll need some stencil vinyl, your cutting mat, and a laptop. Sometime I want to feature this amazing machine in a video and talk about how investing in a machine like this is literally one way you can start a business. Like I know people that run full-fledged Etsy shops and stuff just by buying one of these machines. But as a mom, I've used this machine for so many things and today I'm gonna use it to make a faux wallpaper. If you guys saw me wallpaper in my bathroom, you will know how frustrated I was. So I was excited to try something else. So I went into Cricut Design Space and I was looking for just kind of like abstract lines. I found these two different graphics and decided to go with the more blobby one, which I'm so glad I did. This design was so forgiving and it just worked out really, really well. And I resized it and then I just pretty much followed the directions on the machine. You pick your material and so then it knows exactly what pressure to use. It really is user friendly for sure. And I wanted to use the stencil itself as my measuring tool. So I made sure that my stencil was exactly 12 inches by 12 inches. And you'll see later in a minute why that was really important. And then I centered my design right in the middle of the square and you'll see in a bit. It'll all make sense in a minute. Here is the blade working in real time. The Cricut Maker 3 is the fastest machine out there. It literally is cutting this fast and I was really, really impressed. <laughs> 
Now, I did want to mention Cricut has a lot of other products too. Like if you're looking for a more entry level project, the Cricut Joy might be for you or the Cricut Explore Air 2 even. But the Cricut Maker 3 not only cuts vinyl, paper, cardstock, you know, all those things, it can actually cut leather, balsa wood, fabric, and so much more. It has up to 10 times cut force and up to two times the cut speed compared to the Cricut Maker. And you can make projects from 13 inches wide up to 75 feet long. And no matter which machine you end up deciding to buy, you will love their Cricut design space. There are so many different graphics and fonts and even already pre-designed projects that you can browse through. And yeah, I just have a lot of fun looking through here. But Cricut is truly a brand that I can stand behind and I'm so glad that I got to work with them for this video. But let me tell you what I'm doing here. I'm taking my 12 by 12 inch vinyl stencil and I am just using it and marking every 12 inches like whole way up and down the wall everywhere and then i'm going to stencil in the middle of those squares in the middle of every other square i guess i i should say with paint and it's gonna have a faux wallpaper look with this pattern on the wall now i tried a couple different techniques with this just so i could give you guys the best like recommendations and i will say if i were you i would cut maybe i cut two but i would cut three or four that way you can let them sit and dry a little bit. I did have a little bit of bleeding and dripping, but it was actually really easy to cover up later, you will see. The Cricut stencil vinyl was really gentle on the wall too. Another tip I would have is to make sure when you are putting the paint on, you do a nice thick layer because you don't want to have to come back and do it again. <laughs> um, and also going straight down and not like trying to brush it into the cracks too much because if you don't have your stencil completely sticking to the wall in an area which user error guys it's gonna happen once in a while if you're going straight down on it it will minimize what paint like oozes behind the stencil but I really didn't have a ton of problems with that there was a little bit of a learning curve but I will say as I went it went faster and faster so I would definitely say the Cricut part was easy and then the wall itself was easy to moderate I would say Josh helped me out with making sure I got my spacing exactly right because I was starting to go downhill a little bit um, and he's like such a perfectionist when it comes to rollers I mean he's a construction worker he knows how to read a tape measure and I was glad for his help I worked on this after supper late into the evening it took me with with interruptions and stuff I would say it took me about two hours Josh is putting together the little cubicle unit here from Amazon I will link it below um, it's not the most sturdy. I mean, it's just like fiberboard and like it sticks together. It was really easy to assemble, he said. But if you were planning on having kids like standing on it or like, yeah, if you really wanted a sturdy thing, this might not be for you, but I think it works perfect in a nursery. It's not gonna get used that hard. It's just a great way to categorize clothes. So this project would not have been possible without my Cricut and I will link everything I use down below in the description box and any discount codes that I have for you, any other information. It's always super helpful if you guys look down there and you'll find everything you need. Just hit that little arrow button that's on the right and then you might have to hit show more. Um, you shouldn't have to though. It should be right there at the top. So anyway, definitely check it out and thank you Cricut for making this video possible and my nursery wall possible. Yeah, we love it. And if you see Josh wearing his golf clothes here, he was in a tournament this day and they got second place. I'm so proud of him. He was so excited. He got to golf at this really high end golf course with like a business colleague. And yeah, he had a lot of fun that day. I would love to know, are you guys, like do your husbands have hobbies? What are they? And I will confess, I did not do the marks behind the artwork or the crib. I reasoned that if I ever wanted to actually move things around, at that point I'd be ready to redo the whole room anyway and then I could just paint over everything. Okay, it's the next day and the paint has dried and now I'm just gonna go back in and erase all the little pencil marks and also touch up a few places that the paint had dripped. Like I said, there is a learning curve. You have to make sure that you're removing the stencil really well, that way, that way the paint is not like getting smeared on the wall or anything like that. But if you do, it's no big deal. You just go back in with your wall paint and just touch it up. And so it wasn't really that stressful at all, honestly. Okay, I kid you not, today is such a mood. It's like cloudy, it was raining earlier, and the kids are down for their naps. It's just the best weather to be just like organizing and decorating. I'm gonna put everything away, hang everything up, though I have some space to actually work in, and I'm gonna put all the clothes away, we'll do a tour, and then we will discuss birth plan for the third time around. Yeah, anyway, I'm just so excited. What a cozy day to be working in the nursery.
So this is gonna be my second son, and my first son was born in the spring. My second son will be born in the fall. So they're zero to three month clothing kind of aligns, but when we go into the three to six month sizes, that's where it's completely different. My son was three to six months old in the summer. This one is going to be three to six months old in the winter. So I bought a whole new capsule wardrobe in the three to six month size from Once Upon a Child up towards Harrisburg, and I had so much fun picking this stuff out. Let me tell you my technique, because it was really helpful, I think. Um, I just went through, and I found 10 shirts that I liked. It actually ended up being 11 then, because I couldn't, I couldn't narrow it down. So I found 11 shirts that I loved, and then I went to their pants section and just found a coordinating set of pants. I had a friend who told me this one time, and it is such good advice. Never buy a shirt without the leggings or pants to go with it because it's just frustrating. And then I'm gonna roll up the onesie or the shirt with the pants and store it that way. That way my husband, if he's dressing the baby, he doesn't have to ask me what he should be putting on. He can just grab something. It's gonna coordinate. And if you noticed, I've kind of picked kind of the same colors too. So we could mix and match if we needed to, but having that whole pairing system saves so much time and headache and thought and you have predetermined cute little outfits. Okay, I promise we're almost ready for the reveal, but first I just have to do a little bit of cleaning and then I will show you everything. Okay, let me show you around. It really is a simple room. I mean, everything's pretty straightforward. Anyway, one of the first things you're gonna notice about this room is that it's very monochromatic, just lots of brown and black tones with some terracotta mixed in. Um, and I like it that way because then I have kind of more of a chaotic like patterns mixed together. Um, but since it's monochromatic, it kind of still looks cohesive and just cozy and I like all the textures. I will link everything down below that I can get a hold of. So look in the description box if you have a question about anything. Some of these things are thrifted, but a lot of them you can still find on Target or Amazon. So definitely check that out. It will be very helpful. <laughs> Over here is the changing table. And I like to put a mirror here so that the baby can like look at themselves. It's like, you know, entertainment for them. Up here on the shelf, I just have some little things here. This sign I may put on the door. I'm not sure yet, I haven't decided. But I did spray paint it and I really like the color. This organizer here is from Target as well as the changing pad cover and we got this off of Facebook Marketplace actually. Still waiting on my organizers to come so maybe I will insert some footage once they show up this evening by nine o'clock according to Amazon. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just have newborn on this side and zero to three on this side. We'll see what we get to use. Of course, in here, all the blankets and swaddles, they come in so handy. I love them for even just like burp claws and all kinds of stuff. Like they're just like multi-use, yeah, rags really. <laughs> um, and then the bottom one is just full of wrap. I have two baby wraps and just some extra, yeah, baby supplies. Over here is the play gym that I made for Ivani and then I repainted the pink balls into terracotta colors when we had Fletcher, so I don't have to change them around this time. This mat, I would like to do a new DIY. Basically, I took two swaddles and put them together and it's just looking really ratty and there's like a little piece of uh, batting in the middle, kind of like a little baby quilt. So I kind of want to do a new one, so maybe I'll put that in another video if I get it done. <laughs> um, and this here is not going to be staying. I will take that downstairs. Um, this is one of the first things our babies always play with. They lay under it and just like look at it. Over here is my cane rocking chair, which is so comfortable. Don't ask Josh about it. He says it's not. I personally think it's amazing. And then this little nightstand is from Ikea and the box as well. And then I just have some reading material. And this is a salt rock lamp. All my kids had one. This one is a white one. I really like it. Over here, I just have the car seat stored for now. And then I have the like crib skirt, which is just a piece of fabric I threw under there. I didn't actually even sew anything. I like to put that there so I can hide things under there if I need to use storage. Although with this house, I don't really need more storage. Um, and then this is like a muslin, just crib sheet, which I do have a protector underneath as well. I got this off of Amazon. In fact, I got that off of Amazon as well. The bobby pillow is from Target, but then the case I believe I got off of Amazon. Do you guys like the mobile? I made this myself. Um, for Ivani and then this was blush colored and then I painted them terracotta when Fletcher was born so I don't have to do anything new with that. It does sing and spin um, and yeah we'll leave it up as long as the baby isn't big enough to mess with it you know and choking hazard that type of stuff. 
and I got these two stuffed animals, which I will link below. And the artwork, I mean, you guys have seen all about the wall, so you know all about that, but then the artwork here, I will make available to you guys. It is really, really big, 36 by 48 or something, like really big, um, and I got that printed at Staples. It was like six bucks, and Josh made me a frame, so it's really just very, very lightweight. Um, and, you know, the baby, once it gets older, we'll see how it works out. Fletcher was fine with something like that, but we'll see about this one. <laughs> And then here, I love to display some of my favorite swaddles on this little hook. And then down here, it's like, what's here? More storage? Well, I had these cute boxes for the other kids because they were out. And I really could have just stored them in a closet. But since I had them, I was like, I want them out here. Um, so I put them in this cubicle. And in here is actually the clothing I have up to 12 months. I don't actually have a lot. So I'm going to have to be doing some shopping. Here's a little beanie bodied bear that you can heat up and use like a heat pad if you want to and this is a gift it was a gift from my grandma to Ivani it's actually a little penny bank um but I turn it like that and it looks really cute this is the clothes hamper which I can't remember I think I got it at home goods and this here you can get these all over the place but it's going to be just kind of like a catch-all where you throw things um and I don't do a diaper pail over here I just have a trash can that way we have to empty it often because it's going to stink whether it's a diaper pail or a trash can so if it's a little like this you get rid of it faster, if that makes sense. <laughs> this curtain is just a piece of white fabric that I sewed back for the other house and I just decided to use it again. And we did settle on some blinds from Lowe's if you guys watched that vlog. And I'm really happy with them. See there, I think it looks really good and sleek and simple. Nothing like eye catching. That's not what I was going for at all. Let me know what you guys think about the rug placement. I think, I think I'm gonna leave it there for now, but I, I just am not seeing something. I think the more I look at it, the more I'll maybe realize where it should go. I love it. I, I really do. It feels so cozy. I know it's not their baby space really. It's more of mine. And it feels so good. Like that was so fun. This room is so cute and simple and I love it. I'm so excited for this baby now all of a sudden. Wow. And I don't get I don't get baby fever. I don't I still don't have baby fever. But I think I can do it. Ugh. I'm very nervous still. I don't know. You think you wouldn't be nervous the third time around, but I am. In fact, you know what? Let me get the camera off the tripod and let's talk about it. Um and yeah, let's talk about my hopeful birth plan, which talking about that makes me really nervous. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's do it. Okay. If you are going to be a first time mom or you haven't been a mom yet and you're like, what in the world is a birth plan? Yes, I get it. You can't really actually plan, but my OB always says that they like to kind of know what your mindset is going into it and to just like tape something up that you can quickly hand to the nurses. And for the last two kids, they usually took it, photocopied it, um, and gave it out to whoever was going to be my care providers. And yeah, it was just nice to kind of be on the same page. Now, what is a typical Mennonite birth plan? As you probably can guess, there is no typical Mennonite birth plan. I have friends who have hospital births. I have friends who have, they go to the midwives office. I don't have, I'm trying to think if I have any close friends that ha I have a lot of friends that have had babies. <laughs> Let me tell you. I'm trying to think if I've had any friends that have actually did in-home births. Yes, I actually know of a few um, family members too. Yeah, so it's really all over the map. I have friends who have had epidurals, C-sections. Obviously, that's not <laughs> a, a, you know a choice you usually make. But yeah, um, I've had friends who got induced who have not. Yeah, there's really no typical Mennonite birth story. And I often get questions like, what do you wear and stuff like that. And look. For myself personally, when I go in to have a baby, I'm there to get a job done and whatever it takes to get the job done, that's what we do. I'm a very private person. So for myself, 
I like to be covered up when I can, but obviously there's a business end and you know, <laughs> things gotta happen. So I guess a way that I preserve privacy for myself is I just make sure it's my husband in the room only and not like a bunch of family members or anything like that. Um, and then nurses come and go. And for the past two of my kids, I was really kind of just in my own zone. And I didn't really pay attention to who was going in and out. Like Josh remembers more than I did. I was just like focused, like the lights were dim and I was just like in my own world kind of. Josh, like he could have came and left. I probably wouldn't even have known. I don't remember him hardly at all in any of the labors at, you know, which my last two labors have gone really fast. I will recap them really quickly just so you kind of know where I'm coming from when I explain my plan for this third one. I've had two kids now and both times I had to get induced. I got induced on day seven with Ivani and had her on day eight and because it went past midnight. And then I got induced with Fletcher on day eight and had him on day eight. Both labors were super fast. I didn't have to have any Pitocin. It was just like some Cervidil or Cytotec to like soften the cervix and boom, my body like would go right into labor. I have both my labor stories in a playlist that you guys can refer back to if you'd like to hear some positive birth experiences, but they were both pretty much identical. <laughs> I went in at like a one or a two because they wanted me to, because my water didn't look super, like the fluid looked a little low. Um, and they just wanted to, they were getting antsy and wanted to get the baby out. I did not want, my plan was not to get induced. With Ivani, it scared me to death and then it worked out fine. So with Fletcher, it didn't scare me near as much. So if I would get induced this time, that's really all I know. It actually sounds more peaceful. You can kind of plan ahead. So if you are going to be getting induced, I would say there's so many scary stories out there. I've had two positive ones. I highly recommend going watching those birth videos so you can kind of see what happened. But yeah, both times my body was ready. It just went right in and did its own thing. And I had a baby within three to five hours later. So obviously saying all that, that's the plan. Like if I could pick a labor, I would pick the ones I've had. Honestly, they were so good. Um, yes, they're painful, but like it was not like I felt very powerful in between those contractions. Like I could breathe through them and like I would just be ready for the next one. And my mom always says like, you can't have a baby without the contractions. Like that's how it comes out. Like you need that. And so that's why I would think this is a good thing. This is a good thing. My body's doing this. Like this is crazy. It is crazy. Um, and yeah, that would just help me kind of stay in a good mindset. Both times I didn't even realize I was in labor half the time. Cause I, well, the first time you don't know what to expect. You don't even realize what's going on. And then the second time, same thing. I was just like, I didn't know, like I did have a fully bald with the second time, which I don't, I didn't like that. So if I can avoid that, I'm going to, but you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I had a great midwife that time that birthed babies in Africa and all over the place. So she had a lot of my same mindsets, which back to the birth plan. I have it right here, by the way. I'm not going to read it to you. That's personal. A lot of these things I don't really need out there on the internet. Um, but I will touch on a few of the things. But my whole... Sorry, I feel so out of breath in this video. I guess it's just like there's not as much room for lungs, <laughs> um, you know, being this far along. I am not a crunchy mama. I'm more like just like off of common sense. Like if I was going to have to get Pitocin, I probably would try it without the epidural, but I'd also probably ask for one so that, you know, in the hour or two it took me to get the, them to get there to give it to me, you know, I would maybe have that option. Um, I, I really don't want to get an epidural. The needle freaks me out. Um, the side effects, I know there's some out there, like whatever, um, there's side effects to anything. So I'm not going to scare you if you are currently pregnant and planning on getting an epidural. I've had friends who've loved it. Um, I've had friends who did it without and with and now they're like always with <laughs> so whatever I've never had to use an epidural and I really don't want to get one again this time but again I never had to be on Pitocin either part of me wants to go into labor on my own at home like my water breaks and I labor at home for a while and then I go into the hospital but I don't like I'm a first-time mom kind of when it comes to that whole thing if that would happen I would not feel very calm I would not feel like I would feel like I needed some support or like somebody to tell me what's going on just to say yeah you're good you're fine even though that's contradictory because at the hospital with the last two babies, the nurses really were not involved that much at all. They checked me and helped, told me when to push. That was pretty much, I mean, they were monitoring my vitals and stuff, but it's not like they coach you through everything. I mean, maybe they do, maybe yours did. I don't know. I was in my own world and I was fine and I just did it on my own. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, so if I would go into labor at home, um, I want to have my hospital bag packed and all that stuff, but it would be really, really, I would feel like a fish out of water. Um, we'd have to, yeah, figure out what to do with the kids. My mom lives close. I have lots of family who lives close, so I'm not too worried about it. If it would happen at night, my mom would be the first one I'd want to call to come stay with the kids. Um, but yeah, 
in my brain, I just keep thinking I'll have to get induced. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sure, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So on my birth plan here, I have a note to the care providers at the top, just to summarize, basically it says, you have our baby's life in your hands in so many ways, and we're praying for you, and we trust you to be a part of the team to help us bring this baby into the world. And then I have 12 different goals, which sounds like a lot, I know, but I would like to have a vaginal birth, and I only want my husband in the room. And then I talk about pain management. I want to avoid a C-section. So if I would have to get an epidural to help relax my body so I wouldn't have to get a C-section, then absolutely I would take this epidural over the C-section. But I really don't want either one, especially the C-section, just for my own personal reasons. I mean, we all know the facts of C-section recovery versus a vaginal one. And I've had really good recovery so far. Um, I talk in here about... Uh, positions I imagine using uh, which is really fascinating because I did have a little bit of time to use the birthing ball with Fletcher but with Ivani I just laid there in bed and thought I was trying to sleep here I was in labor and I didn't know it and I was just like rocking back and forth on the bed like moaning like on my hands and knees and I pretty much did that for the whole like every time there was a contraction I would get up on my hands and knees and rock back and forth and then I'd lay back down again and try to fall asleep because I didn't know I was in labor they told me I was supposed to be sleeping all night and then they give me Pitocin in the morning. So I had no idea that I was having a baby. Like they went and checked me, crazy story. Um, right before I was gonna ask for an epidural, I was like, could you check me just so I could see how many centimeters I was. And I was a 10 and I was ready to push and I wasn't allowed to push because there was no doctors available. And I'm like, I can't help it, I have to push. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's just kind of crazy. Fletcher's story was pretty much the same thing. Um, I got them to check me and I was at a 10. <sighs> If you're sitting there really angry at me right now and a little bit jealous, I'm jealous of me too. Like I really want, I would love to have that again the third time around. But they say the third time's a wild card. <sighs> Lord, give me strength. <laughs> I, 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 I'm still at the point where labor still scares me a little bit. I find that by 40 weeks though, you're usually like, let's just get this game on. Let's, let's do it. We can do this. Um, but yeah, right now I'm still a little bit nervous about it. Both of my babies, I did push and deliver on my hands and knees. Sorry if that's TMI, but hey, I didn't push very long for either of them. So I imagine I will do that again. It just what works for me. I have back labor with both my kids and I don't know, it worked. <laughs> I'm not one of those people that wants a mirror. I don't want to see nothing. Like I don't want to, I don't even like to think what my body has to go through to get a baby into the world. I don't want to see it for sure. <laughs> I want to hold my baby right afterwards, obviously, and Josh cut the umbilical cord with the other two kids, so I imagine that will happen again. And then number 12, I just talk about some specific treatments and eye drops and things like that and what we're gonna administer, what we're not gonna do, like different stuff like that. Basically, my goal is to repeat history, which how can lightning strike twice, right? I mean, I know I know it wasn't all rainbows and sunshine. Um, like there's a lot of pain involved. Like I told, I explained to Josh after having my first one that it felt when I went through transition or whatever, if you know what that is, it's like just the really intense part right before you're ready to push. I had no idea what labor was. I went to the bathroom and as I was like there, I felt like a snake was wrapping itself around me like in like just pain, like coiling around me. And like, that's when I was like, okay, if I have to go through this all night long yet, I'm gonna be so whooped till morning. Like this is so painful can they just check me and see where I'm at and then like give me an epidural so I can get some sleep? Cause this is like one in the morning. And then they're like, oh, you're a 10, time to push. Oh wait, the doctors aren't here. <laughs> anyway, like I said, it was pretty crazy, but I got it done. Also both times I had midwives or doctors that were very um, like no nonsense, you can do this, blah, blah, blah. Like whatever, they just kind of let me do my thing. Um, they didn't like coddle me and put their hand on my back or anything like that. So I'm fine with that. I know with COVID stuff, they're not going to be doing that anyway. Yeah, I just, I would love to like experience a home birth without that. Like I, I would never have a peace of mind at my own home. Let me just say that because the hospital is 20 minutes away. And like, I want to be close to the best like care that I can get for myself personally. So I know I wouldn't be able to relax truly at home. That's just me. Every mom is different, um, but I would love to be able to do it at home in some ways just because I could just like be in my own world and not worry about anybody else. But I know if I tried that, I would be worrying because there'd be nobody there to check in on me or anything like that. So 
that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, I would love to hear your stories down below. Did you have to push a long time? Were your labors long or short? How was your third one? Okay, maybe I don't want to hear your stories because if they're scary, I don't want to hear them right now. I'm kind of like at the end here. I don't want to hear the scary ones. Leave me a comment down below. You guys are always saying you're praying for us and stuff and that means so much. But yeah, I'm so glad you guys came around for this video. Thank you to Cricut for sponsoring it and for sponsoring my life pretty much in general. <laughs> Anytime I want to do a craft project or have a brainy idea, usually the Cricut's involved. Um, I'm just so glad that I have the Cricut Maker 3 so you guys can check all that out down below if you want to do a project similar to mine or a different one. Like I said, they're so versatile. Anyway, I will see you all in my next video, which is going to be our baby moon vlog, uh, like a little travel vlog. So I'll also put some maternity fashion in there too. I'll see you then. Bye everyone. Bye.